Hey there, Ross. Hey there, Tim. Hey, Lucas. Hey. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you guys? Good. Do you think uh, robots should wear underpants? Like the, uh... <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Well, I'm not sure about that. I just zeroed in on that comment when I first looked at that on LinkedIn, and uh, I thought that was hilarious. Is that somebody's post in Discord? Yeah, Tim Bennett posted a, a link to his, a LinkedIn post of his, and I, I went there and looked at it, and uh, one of the commenters was like, this is great and blah, blah, blah. But I think that robot should probably be wearing in <laughs> underpants. Nice. Hey, Sean. Hey, Kelly. Good to see you guys. Hey, hey good What's up, Ross? Ross? Good to see you. Ross, good to see you. Good to see you guys. We got a lot of, a lot of good stuff going in the background. Quick updates today. We're going to switch up the office hours kind of and keep things fresh. So we're going to quickly run through the updates. And then we're going to go more into sales strategies, how to create offers, more of the a focus on uh, how people are actually using this stuff to succeed. So I'm going to let Tim take it away for uh, going over the uh, the next round of updates here. Yeah. Thanks, Ross. Let me share my screen. Give me just a moment. Zoom always seems to confuse me, the interface. <laughs> okay. So this is a newer format that we're switching to with these kind of release nodes. We're really going to be focusing more on what the underlying value is, right, of the, the the biggest features that we're working on. And we're also going to be covering, you know, just just the large features, to be honest. We don't need to get into a lot of the details necessarily. So the first thing we've been working on in our primary focus right now is, of course, streaming. Now, how will this help you get more customers? Well, I, it's going to increase the speed of the response time, or at least the appearance of that, right? Uh, just like your customers are already expecting today, the experience they're expecting today, because they use the chat GPT interface. If you want to understand kind of in your head, what the difference between streaming and kind of the normal process is, you can think of streaming as kind of like a, a phone call, right? Data is going back and forth, or even this call data is going back and forth and we can all kind of respond to each other at the same time. And then the normal HTTP response cycle that we've been using now is like a letter, right? A letter has to be sent, it gets delivered, and then someone responds back. Now let's go over the next one we're working on, the next major feature, because there's a lot of other stuff going on behind the scenes, but we're updating to the latest models. The key value this will provide to you and your customers is improving model performance and reliability. I don't know how many of you saw this, but Sam Altman did tweet that the newer GPT-4 Turbo model will reduce cases of laziness in the model. And here it actually says that as well, reducing cases of laziness. So we're hoping that's going to help for some of these more complex use cases, right? Things like scheduling, lead generation, combining the two, stuff like that. The next thing we're working on is a feature that we're calling default bots. And you can see here kind of a conceptualization of what that will look like when that's pushed to production later this week. And uh, essentially what it is, is allows you to define default bots. And the whole purpose behind this is that, so when your customers sign up, they can have a default bot that you've defined that's in their account, just ready to go and working in your own user interface. The default bot would be indicated kind of by this blue border. And then when you hover over it, it's going to say that it is the default bot. Finally, the last thing we're covering here is actually kind of related. So it's called what we're calling clonable share links. Now, the idea here is that you can come in here, click on allow users to clone, and the, the URL will change slightly. And then wherever you put that link, it's going to allow your customers to seamlessly access that link and then clone that bot into their account. So the end result of this is they can get started more quickly. If you share, for instance, a chat bot on social media that you know makes YouTube video descriptions or something, that's just an example. But if you were to do something like that, you could, they could easily clone it into their account, get started using it. If they didn't have an account, it would prompt them to create an account. Then it would redirect them to that bot where they can then clone it. But that is the major efforts that we've been working on right now. So I'll turn it back over to you, Ross. Yeah, the main things I'd, I'd like to add to that is the, the idea behind these is like they're all kind of semi-related within the same um, user funnel or, or top of funnel experience where the common theme or thread that I've been hearing from the last few dozen conversations with agency owners that I've had is like, how do we just get to people to have this aha moment as quickly as possible? And right now, the process of trying to get them to create a bot on their own is 
a little slow. So this is the two or three features that when combined together will allow customers to sign up under your white label super easily and then be able to have the aha moment under your specific bot that you put in as the default bot. So that that way you can control that aha moment. So like, for example, if you're going with real estate agents, that default bot can be all targeted and geared towards real estate agents, for example. Any questions on this overall? Hey, Sean. Um, that shareable bot, if they do not have an account yet, will they be able to just automatically create a trial account in our account? Yep, correct. And then it will redirect them after they create the account to that bot immediately. Okay. Very, 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 very cool. All right. This is, that's an amazing feature. Thanks for making that happen, Ross. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. And this, that's kind of going to be a, a good lead into the next kind of section of, of these calls where we're going to go over and try to focus more on the sales aspect of how people are winning and how people can improve on their sales process and focus with, you know, how do we position this to clients? How do we create an offer that is enticing and irresistible to clients? What are some of the resources and tools like the Miro boards and the graphics and all these things that we can use to our advantage? So to kind of jump this off, I'd just kind of like to throw the question back to the group. If anybody had any good sales conversations in the last week or so. I didn't have a good one, but I, I went to our local vet because I was thinking we were thinking about doing something for vets and it turns out somebody's already got a vet application and they've, they've integrated it into the website stuff that they put together. So that, that blew that one out of the water for me. How did Which, you find that vet client? I uh, just called, called my own vet, went in to see the office manager. So basically figured. like a cold call, basically. Yeah, I, well, I dump enough money into there. I figured they, they'll meet with me. But she had, and but the cool thing was about it, they, they, their company that does your website had already gotten them in there. So I don't know how many more opportunities there are out there for veterinarians. But they, she said that the doctors had told her that they were like 40 to 50% more productive. And just from all of the stuff they were able to divert to the bot, I've no, like, that was astonishing. And this is, this is, this vet is really, really, they are really, really, uh, really, really astute. Their website is absolutely fabulous. They, they, they've, they've had, they've had been. So, you know, so the, the, the trick that, the, the thing I learned from that is, is if we want to conquer the world on something like this, we're going to really have to, we're going to have to pull together and try and get some, some areas that really work. And I'm struggling with those. I, I'm still in my my world of of mid-sized companies, small, mid to small sized companies that can afford the services. But looking at a at a knock it out of the park retail idea, I still uh, there's a couple of ideas I have, but I haven't really got so just got by a show of hands, who is not who does not have a niche selected yet? Everyone's kind of if you're just like kind of iffy. Yeah. Mitch, a little bit. Kelly, a little bit. Okay. And I know, Jim, I remember you mentioning that you were trying a lot of different... Uh... Well, we're opening it up with the webinar we're doing. We're opening it up to see yeah. where the interest is. I've always found that it's easier to find clients who are willing to buy and develop your offering based on them than it is to find the offering you want to have and go and try and find people who want to buy it. It's just a, it the, the success rate is much greater when you make stuff that people want. Mm -hmm. Go figure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what I'm, I'm opening this up. And I, like, I've got, we've got, I guess we have 20 or 30 people registered so far, and I'm going to take a look through and see and try and open some conversations with them to find out where their interests are. Gotcha. And that's definitely one of the things that we're starting to see is like these group calls with webinars or, and, and some others have done this in the past where other people are starting to share their aha moments. Like I like to say on the call with others that then get other people start thinking and because they're all in the general same niche or same, you know, area of, of expertise, they kind of understand that other problem natively, and then they can kind of e more easily see where that AI solution can come in, where you can then create an offer for it. So um, the focus I want to kind of have for this, this conversation is actionable ways that people can use to either find these leads or clients and then what they can do to then sell or make a good offer for for a client 
one of the best things that I've seen recently is variations of this calculator that I've been working on and making. So I've, I've seeded it to a few people and one of them showed me an, a variation that they did yesterday that I started rebuilding and it takes basically the same exact one that I showed last week, which is a customer support, very simple, very simple, uh, customer support, like how much you're saving with AI based off of what plan that you have. But the flip on this is then adding in the monthly website traffic and then turning that into a conversation of how much is a, what is the value of a new customer to you? And you can basically kind of use some, some rough percentage oh. numbers to show that there can be a gain in revenue based off of the amount of conversations that could be had when AI is online 24 seven versus whatever their customer support employees are, you know, from nine to five or seven to five, or whatever it may be. Uh, is anybody else using any resources? Are you guys using slide slide decks? Are you using Miro boards? Are you using videos, demos? Just to kind of get a sense, what are you guys finding success with in terms of the materials that you're using to, to showcase this stuff to sell to people? I've got a uh, slide deck. A slide deck, okay. Yeah, so I've started using that now with the presentations. But the big, the, so I've got three new signups from Thursday last week. Nice. Through to today. And uh, they're a mixture of different businesses. So we've not gone super niche and targeted. But what I have done, as, as Tim's sort of seen, is like we've just gone all out in LinkedIn and just pushing, pushing, right. and pushing, trying different things that stick. So you know, the serious thing about customer service, a bit more jokey one today, a bit more sort of superhero-y type thing. Which yep. has got best amount of traction, um, but uh, some clients are using stuff internally. Two clients are using it internally already. The new signups, um, mm -hmm. so they're not too bothered about putting it out front facing straight away. Um, okay. And another one is, and another one, and interestingly, not for profit. My first not for profit companies come along and said that they want to give it a try. Yeah. Very cool. That's so cool. That's, uh, that's interesting. So are you creating content specifically on LinkedIn or are you trying to focus and spread content on all different platforms and channels? Um, at the moment, it's all LinkedIn. So I just, but I, I want to start repurposing that content to my other channels now. Because you're starting to now see success with it. I'm seeing what, what sticks and what resonates with people and the type of comments that are coming back. And I'm using those comments then that sort of indicate what I need to start pushing on. Got it. Okay. So then the content that you're posting on LinkedIn, it's driving people to sign up for a free trial or are you put it, pushing them to a, a meeting first? What do you say? It tends to be a meeting. You know what? Free. Uh, I thought the free trial would be the easy sell, but it's not. It's it's getting them to the meeting first. Yep. Then they, they run out of credits and I tend to bump up their credits within the free trial and then they sign up. So it's like, that's, that's how it's sort of progressed so far with probably half a dozen different clients doing that sort of same, that same process. As, as you've proceeded and figured out that this is the flow that's starting to work for you, have you mapped this out for yourself in any, in any way or shape or form, or is this kind of, you're just running by the seat of your pants and going as, you know, going by the flow? Uh, I'm starting to get more um, precise with it now, okay. not, not least because we want to go and present to like bigger organizations now. So the, the big opportunity we've got is to present to those what we would call partners. So we've got we've got three we've identified three so uh, three types of customers. So we've got an end user who will just come along and sign up, get a free trial, pick a plan, uh, whether it's standard or pro, depending on their type of business. Mm -hmm. And they may or may not lead, need a little bit of support. And the bigger businesses do, and if they've got more than one bot and they've got more than one application for the bots, and they'll they'll need a bit of handholding. Uh, the second type are the affiliates who go out and grab those type of customers for us. So I've set the affiliate program up, but that's not really driven any traction yet. But the biggest opportunity I think is with uh, partners. So where we can align ourselves with a partner who's already got a pre-existing market or distribution of, of particular customers that they're already dealing with. So that could be, you know, an agency that's got a lot of real estate companies or an agency that's mm -hmm. dealing with, dentists or opticians or you know however or recruitment it could be a whole different thing but those guys have already got the user base and mm -hmm. if we can strike partnership deals with those guys and then help them do resale of the products into yep. into their network 
there's a huge opportunity there. I think. Is those are those clients ones that you found through posting the content, or have are those ones that you found through your network or cold calling or what? A mixture of everything, really. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's no, had... no, I've not found that sort of. So the easy wins for me are all my my digital marketing clients. So yeah. Already, yeah. But most of those tend to be small, medium sized businesses, maybe with one website. I do have one who's got a bigger international website, but that's a different story. So we tend to find that those guys are the one stop shop. So they just need the bot for either customer service or lead generation or appointment booking. Okay. Going out and finding the bigger partners is a bigger, longer term strategy, I think. Yeah. For those of us that are just getting started with this and trying to get our agency up off the ground, would you advise us to try and focus on getting those one-off clients? Or would you try to think that it might be wor worth it to spend a little bit more time to close this, uh, you know, higher, you know, client that might have a lot of customers within their system already? It depends where you're coming from. If you've got an established agency or you've got an established business but it isn't aligned to AI yet, and you can show that you can be more AI orientated to help those clients then you know, go after that one big client and be, be that go-to person. I think. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. finally, what feature is most important to the majority of the businesses that you're talking to that aren't in the big partnership area, the more of the smaller business, the one-offs, are they focused on the Q&A, are they using it internally? Are they using the leads or is it kind of a, a mixture of all of it together? Is there, or is there one thing that kind of stands out? It's a mixture of all, but I think the one that stands out always is that I have a information retrieval, which might be just about answering relevant questions. So it's just about being that, that concierge for their, for their business where if someone's got a question and they can get a quick answer. Is that the feature that you focus on, on the initial sales call to try to get them to have that quote unquote aha moment? The one, the the thing that sells itself, and this was, we did this with one big client where I'd already presented it to an, an MD of a business, and his chairman came over to the UK, um, and the MD presented my demo bot that I'd given him the day before, and he presented it to his chairman, who was then on the phone to the rest of his business, and he did the selling for me. So I think the best, the aha moment comes from maybe having a, a pre-prepared demo that can then be used by by the internal team. Because if, as soon as someone's had that aha moment in, internally, they're, they're your salespeople then, you know? And is, it is, and is that aha moment derived from them asking a question about their information and getting a, a, a correct contextual answer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, sometimes the more, the more technical, the better there as well. Yes. Uh, and to clarify, does that mean it's a longer answer or what, what do you mean by technical just that it's more it's more technically accurate for that business so it's not okay. just hi would you like to make an appointment it's like no we know this about you or this is information we can uh relay back to you gotcha okay i hope everyone uh g found value from that quick fire thank you tim thank you so yeah. much that was uh, amazing <clears throat> I'm trying to just process all that for, for a quick second. That was a lot of good information. Anybody have any questions in general or something they want to kind of go off on that? Any uh, On anything Tim, Tim mentioned? A uh, question I have, Tim, is, is initial traffic. Are you seeing good initial traffic across the box when you implement them? Um, no, I think... Um... That's my, my biggest worry for external use is we, we've, we've done a pretty substantial ad campaign over the past five days. Um, and we've gotten two people who've actually engaged with the bot. That's my, my, my biggest worry in getting this for external use is how, how many people will actually engage with it. That's the, the, the biggest issue I'm, I'm working I'm, I'm It's bugging me right now. And coming from my web design background and you'll, you'll relate to this Ross is that, you know, if you build a website for someone, it's got a number of touch points for that end customer. So they can use they can use a contact form, they can use an email, there's a telephone number on there. The chatbot is another one of those touch points. So it's it's part of the gang, really. And it means that it's got it's it's sharing the interaction with those other those other ways that that customer can actually talk to the business. Agreed. It's, not like it, it's not like it's the only thing, is what I'm saying. It's like, you know, that's the only way I can contact this business. So the you know, the client can do their own research on your website information already. 
then you know if the if it's um during the day if it's normal working hours they can pick up the phone or drop an email and they're going to get a response fairly quickly there probably is a contact form on there there may be a gated piece of content that they've got on there where they can put their details in and download a document and this kind of thing so it's it's really probably how we help the clients do their web design to point to the bot to say go to the bot because this is where you're going to get the quickest response and everything else that you need maybe or or jim was it a was it a campaign that you ran to the bot like to a conversation yeah i'm running i'm running it directly onto the page we're getting and, okay. and that's okay i'm just sort of trying to figure out where managing client expectations on the other one that we've done for our, our other client they've gotten two proposals for the two times people have used the bot so it, like it has to like it anecdotally that one's a really good one um but but it's just i'm trying to figure out how to drive traffic to it because i think that's gonna i think that's gonna be a a way that people people are going to respect the numbers of people who engage with it that that's going to be that's going to be something that comes up uh, internally. I have no problem internally. I like if I'm pursuing com companies that do this internally. That's that's not an issue. Externally, I'm trying to figure out ways to drive traffic to it to make it seem like there's some activity once it gets launched. Kelly, yeah, I was going to say just one of the things that you know we Mitch and I had talked about was in order to get people to the bot like. You know how when you go on a website, something pops up where it's like 10% off. It's like, don't tell them to put the 10% off there. Like put it when the chat pop-up delay goes on. So you could see the 10% off and then they go click on it and use it. So that was something that we, you know, we're talking to people about doing as well as like a lot of people who already spend money on SEO were like, listen, you're already spending this money. You're already making an investment in this without capturing info. So it's like you leave your ROI totally unquantified by not knowing how much like you're actually getting your investments worth. Mm -hmm. So by telling them that people have kind of been responding well to being like, oh, okay, now I can really see how my investment is doing as well as actually capturing their info. Are you tagging both... Uh... Or are you creating like, are you tagging like the forms on their page as well as a bot? And then are you also focusing on that pop-up message? Like, like that must be a big piece of this, right? Yeah. The, the pop-up message is just the, is the key. Like yeah. I, I found, like just like, think if you could just have it pop up and like you get that discount right mm -hmm. there. It's like, okay, people are more inclined to go check that out for a discount. I mean, all these big companies, they just get all their emails from people entering it for 10% off that pop-up. Mm -hmm. So if you can just drive traffic that way, it just, you know, makes it easier for you and the bot. Because now you have their information instantly yeah. rather than having to continue to pursue the conversation. I, I really like that way you're positioning this. That's good. Yeah. One to add on to Kelly, one thing that we've totally noticed that has been really helpful for us is when targeting clients, we look at clients who are uh, running additional campaigns rather through SEO and Facebook ads. And that's such a huge selling point because we already know they're putting money in ad spent. And if we could say, hey, you're putting all this money in ad spent, let's make sure we capture an additional more of those leads and make sure um, your ad spent money is yeah quantifying the ROI and seeing how those campaigns are doing. Mm -hmm. Um so like the whole lead capture aspect worked really well when we saw clients were running campaigns to their website. Yeah. I've been, I've been, that's, I've been telling agency owners all week that like that is the money hack right now is going to Facebook ads library, finding businesses that are running ads and being like, Hey, don't you want more leads or more business from without increasing your ad spend? Boom. So, so, so good. Um, yeah, you told us to do that on a meeting and it worked. There we go. I mean, <laughs> love it. Nice. Yeah. It would be sick if we could make something that could like pull the, pull the, pull the business contact it. Like if we could just go to the like, and get the business contact information from that page. That'd be sick. How are you guys contacting them? Are you, are you doing cold calling? Yeah, we're doing a lot of cold calling from nice. um, like just, just scraping leads, but we found this really cool software called Apollo. And so that's like all LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. and you just get all of their their emails and, and phone numbers through there or just go click on the website just type it in and then you can just vet it real quick nice all 
Um, but yeah, we've just been doing cold calls. And then right after the cold call, we write it down and then do a follow up email. We like just before the call, we'd sent out a follow up email like two weeks ago. The guy just called us back. Nice. Like, oh, do this. Nice. Okay. I've got some really exciting stuff to, uh, to show you uh as well so uh you're in the discord right okay yeah i'm in it okay uh dm me your email I'll, okay I'll, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna send you some stuff definitely that's cool yeah i think i think the the common thread here is a lot of the agencies that are just kind of like brute forcing this in the sense of cold calling cold emailing getting this in front of people is starting to change the conversation from and it's this is exactly the same process that we kind of saw with agency owners from my point of view of how people started to understand what this stuff could actually do what the actual real limitations are within you know the guardrails of what we're dealing with with, with open ai and now businesses are starting to kind of come online to that so to speak so and the next uh the next couple of months is gonna be pretty interesting cool so um i think that will do it for today unless anybody has any other questions just just to Kelly's point earlier, so could you have it so when you land on the website page, as soon as you start the scroll, the bot actually opens. So at the moment you've got, you can have the uh, the intro, the icebreaker question or the intro question sitting above the icon, but could you not have it so that as, as you scroll, you could put a timer on that and the bot window could open up and then the first bit of content in there could be the offer, for example. Mm. So you, you, you're you're driving the traffic to the bot that way could that do could that work yeah we could do like percentage page scroll i believe should be able to yep yeah and then have the bot actually open you yeah yeah it would like simulate the user clicking it to open up mm -hmm. basically yeah that could work yeah. i got asked as well for a uh, one of the new clients said oh does it make a noise when it opens can it make a noise oh boy so they were like, <laughs> they, they want that pop or that little snap. That, that ding sound I always mute. Mm, I think it could. Yeah. We can definitely do that as much as I hate that feature. <laughs> it's a bit but... gimmicky, but yeah. 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 I just I framed it in. So it was the first thing they saw. Yep. Um, uh, so now even on our page, when you come into the page, instead of having a graphic up there, the first thing you see is the chat box. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that's working, but, but that, but that, I don't know if people realize it's real and they can use it or not, but that's interesting. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. The other thing I think we're that's up next as well. Uh, just like a couple other smaller things was um, having the ability to make the conversation starters static or reappear. Uh, that was another thing that a couple of people asked for us. So that's on the, that's on our radar as well. Um, as well as we finally got started on the, customizable login uh, page and dashboard stuff as well. And what we're going to do with that is basically instead of, instead of making it, you know, text box color for every little thing, we're going to give just a blank HTML box basically. And there will be code in there that kind of showcases where the login or the sign up form is on the page. So that way you could either, you know, you can basically just do anything and that will allow us to create tutorials that would be like, here's how you put in a background image. And this will also allow us to all use ChatGPT to build this stuff for us. So we could just take the code that's over here, paste it into ChatGPT and tell chat, hey, I need to make this have a blue border and blah, 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 and whatever. And then paste it back over here and click save. And then you now have a custom login page. That's the idea of, rather than us image, you know, somebody wants a video. Well, we made an image. So we're going to make it just like kind of a more of a, a base thing to start. Hey, Ross, my name is Voss Edelin. I'm currently evaluating uh, Stammer for, for internal purposes. Hey. And I did have a quick question for you. Yeah. Uh, the platform seems great, right? It, it generates the responses based on documentation uploaded to the platform. I have a group of folks that I would say have very low level understanding of our current products and services. And I would also say that they have very low written uh, proficiencies, right? And they're interfacing with a lot of our customers. And as I purview into the conversations, I can see that they're causing more con um, confusion or causing and creating more damage with our customers, right? Based on the fact that they're not positioning our products or services 
the best way or their responses to them in the best way. So I was curious, do you have something in play now or on the roadmap where not only are you able to generate a response based on the documentation that's been uploaded to the repository, but also write out yes. a response that kind of wraps around the response. So if if you're a customer reaching out to me and you're like, hey, Voss, how do I do X, Y, Z? And is it possible to jump on a call later this week? And can you share more about your pricing, right? I can get all of that information through Stammer, but I also want the end user, our low level proficiency writers to kind of say, hey, respond back to this email and copy the response from the documentation uh, and just also include that would love to jump on a call, go over pricing and walk them through the rest of ABC. This way, the end user is not really writing anything at all and it kind of streamlines the whole conversation back to the end user. Yeah, so you would, and the way you do that is literally in the base system prompt, you just explain what you just told us, but in written form, let the bot know that after displaying the result of answering the question, basically, to go ahead and say that text you just said. So, hey, if you want to hop on a call, here's our link. Bam, there you go. But what if it's more complex than that, Tim? What if it's... Can you describe? Sure. So let's say, you know, the questions are coming in and let's say, I don't know, one account manager receives 25 questions per day from 25 different clients. Now, mm -hmm. at some point, majority of those questions are going to be able to be, uh, or the responses would be generated from Stammer um, because it is, you know, aligned with the documentation. But what if there's a uh, a question that is in that email that the end user received that is not able to generate a response. And, and and maybe it's because it's not a technical question, right? Maybe it's because that response wouldn't lie within the documentation. But what if there were, uh, I don't know, I'm trying, I'm coming up with empty on a, on a particular question, but what if I there was it. more to it, right? Other than just so, a CTA. Yeah, yeah, totally. So the bots cannot, regardless of, of some of the, the news you may see out there, a bot does not have the ability to yet handle the complexities that a human can handle, right? So taking pieces of information from multiple sources that it doesn't have access to and then crafting a response as one of your sales reps would, or, or even you yourself, it doesn't have that ability yet, possibly in the future. And we supply, certainly are doing research to, to supplement that. Um, but there are limitations currently, and, and that is true. Now, how far can you get it as, as, as good as you want. I think we'd have to understand your use case more and you'd have to try and, and prompt the bot, write the prompt and, and see what can be done. You, well, and you, I'll, you, you mentioned email too. Is that where the, that in this, this initial message is coming from? Correct. So my, okay. my use case here is basically um, our account managers would receive or currently receive majority of their questions are coming in via email, right? Cause they're dedicated to a particular hmm. group of clients um, and the, the process now is they, they would go through some documentation, um, and in order to kind of answer that customer's question, yep. um, and then they might say, it, it, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll write out a, a draft email saying, absolutely, Tim, happy to connect with you on Monday. I'm available between one and four. Um, and just let me know if there's a good time for us to connect and happy to go over the pricing with you. And then what they do is they take that bit plus the generated response off the documentation, they'll copy it, they'll throw it into chat GPT, and they'll just say, respond back to this email, rewrite it professionally, mm. and include this bit of information. And then it generates, you know, an extremely well-written email communication that they then copy and put back into the email. And I'm, I'm trying to find a solution that Got it. doesn't require them to jump from one platform to, to another platform. Gotcha. So the the short answer is some Zapier magic. That would be probably the easiest, cheapest, like most widely used solution out there where you would just do connections either to Stammer or to ChatGPT to then create that summary or create that entire email because that would be better used for that solution. Whereas then once that thing is generated, you could then use it to then either send it back directly to that VA or that account manager, or whoever, and then they could forward it off to that user. 
that's currently how I think something would be done. You you might be able to do something like this and and some of these other like maybe like bubble IO, but um, it's definitely like a, a further use case than just kind of the core of what Stammer's built for, for sure. Okay. Um, I, I'll tell you what, I would love to jump on a call with you or I was, Dave, yeah. I believe. Um, I was just going to say, let's, let's hop on a call and we can, we can go over this in more detail and kind of try to figure out a game plan. I'll, I'll summarize what my use case is in an email. I'll shoot it over to you. Would you okay. mind sharing your email? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's just ross at stammer.ai. Perfect. I appreciate it. Cool. Thanks for joining. Absolutely. Cool. Any other questions from anybody else? No, that's a, uh... That's interesting. Ross, you may consider like there if you if you're gonna use Zapier to go to to um an, a, to an email to go out, you could you could actually use chat GPT on 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 the email to actually format the email. If they just fire this stuff off to a Google email with and there's a couple of of at of of add-ons you can get that'll actually format an email directly there. You might be able to kill kill that in one step. Nice. Just, Good to keep in mind. Yeah. Yeah. And the stuff that's going to come out, if, especially if you're using Gmail, the stuff that's going to come out from Gemini will, in terms of formatting emails, is, is going to be pretty, pretty good as well coming up. Yeah. It's exciting. Lots of new stuff coming out. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Talk to you next week. Thanks, guys. See ya. See ya. Cheers. Bye. Thanks, Cheers. Bye bye, guys.